Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrading.com nightly wrap-up show. I uh, hope everybody is doing well. Um, before we start, again, a uh, quick moment of silence. Uh, today, 9-11, a very, very, uh, you know, very somber day, especially all of us um, who live in the tri-state area that have either friends or loved ones or associates or somebody that passed away in that tragic day. So uh, just a second uh, moment of silence for those who are unfortunately not with us. So 9-11, right? 9-11, very somber day. Last night, you had uh, the election, uh, the election debate, Kamala Harris, Donald Trump. Um, you know, I watched 15 minutes of it. Um, yeah, I'm not going to really go into what I thought or uh, what it is. You guys have your own opinions, but uh, the market didn't like it at first. If you looked at the overnight futures session, uh, you had the Dow futures down pretty hefty amount. Uh, you had the NASDAQ futures down about 130 points last night. And you're like, well, let's see. You know, let's see what happens with tomorrow's uh, CPI. CPI came out this morning. Uh, here are the basically the numbers. August CPI, month over month, uh, 0.2 versus 2.2 estimate. Uh, pretty much, you know, pretty much the lowest annual pace since early of 2021. The initial response was to the downside, and then they try to rally the market, and then slowly but surely they just started just taking the market down. And you're like, oh god, the market just, you know, the bulls just cannot live with prosperity, right? They just cannot. This is like everything we've seen over and over again. The bulls, you know, try to rally and then they get killed, and they try to rally again and they get killed. Oh, here we go again. Yeah, this is why we play the game. Um, if you didn't trade today, okay, if you didn't trade today, it, it's kind of hard for me to describe to you exactly what happened. You could read about it and you could actually get kind of the data behind it and you go, wow, that's that's interesting, right? But until you actually saw what we saw today, for anybody who trades uh, actively on a day-to-day -day basis, this is today is the, the, the reality. It's like you just saw... A UFO, right? You know, you've heard of people who saw UFOs. There's people's chatter here, Area 51, this, that. Shh, can't tell anybody UFOs, right? Right. But until you actually see one, it's very tough to describe to somebody what a UFO looks like. And here was today, just to give you an example, right? Just to give an example, just to give you an example of how crazy today was. And again, I, I feel like I've been saying this was a crazy day for you know many many days. But today took the cake. Let me try to describe to you what today was. A lot of you guys, when you start out, you start out in that whole small cap, low float game. Again, just makes sense, like an easy transition, just because a lot of new traders, they start off with, you know, $1,000, $2,000 accounts, whatever the case may be. And they see some stock going from one to three, and they're like, yo, I got to be in it. I got to be in it. It's going to five. They buy it at three, goes up 10 cents, and the stock goes to 50 cents. And 99 out of 100 times, anything that you chase, right? Anything that you chase, you're going to get killed. You're going to get absolutely killed. And we always talk about uh, in the trading world, the one time that you catch that wave, the one time you feel like you're doing something right, and then you do it again because you got away with it, you do it again, and then you lose again for the next 99 times. Just to give you an understanding, okay? The range that the market had today. Look, let's start off with the cues. Okay, here's the 60 minute view of the cues, right? Here's the 60 minute view of the cues. So we got murdered, right? We got murdered pre market. Everything started getting killed. And then slowly but surely, we started recovering, right? Slowly but surely, started recovering. And a little bit more, a little bit more. Not a big deal. Who really cares? Dead cat bounce, dead cat bounce, dead cat bounce, dead cat bounce. And then all of a sudden, the market stopped going down, right? It was just kind of going sideways for a little bit until right around 10, 30, 11 o'clock. If you guys remember, NVIDIA had 
their conference with Goldman Sachs, basically just kind of giving an update uh, of what happened and this, that, and the third. So you have the CEO of NVIDIA, his name is Huang, Jensen, Jensen Huang, I believe, right? If I'm pronouncing it right. So he basically started giving Goldman Sachs some updates of what was going on. Uh, he noted here, and I'm kind of reading off my notes here, and NVIDIA's Blackwell has ramped up into full production and will ship in Q4 at the Goldman Sachs conference today. If you guys remember a couple months ago, uh, they were talking about a potential delay. So along those lines with everything else that, you know, obviously I'm sure they've said something else, the market started liking it, right? Started liking it and slowly but surely, right? You had this big dip, sell the news, right? You had you sell the news dip and NVIDIA literally went from like 11 to seven and you're like, here we go. Everything's selling off, everything is selling off. And then the market just absolutely exploded. And, and and just check this out. We didn't have a downtick. Okay. These are all these are all 60 minute candles. Guys, we didn't have a downtick since eleven o'clock in the morning. It's it's almost like buying a two dollar stock, right? Excuse me, buying a stock that went from two dollars, went to ten, and you got long at twenty, and now the stock is at forty. We didn't have a, a red candle. Guys, we didn't have a downtick in the NASDAQ market for four hours, for absolute four hours. Uh, I, again, I checked my spam box. Apparently, it was in there. Was today the last day to buy stocks in the tech world? Apparently so. Folks, I've never seen a rally like this. I, I, I'm telling you, I've, I've traded during the internet crazes, the craziest rallies of all time. I have never seen a day that there was panic buying. I'm talking about panic buying, especially in the chip sector, that they were buying calls deep out of the money, millions and millions of dollars. This wasn't uh, some Joe Schmo buying uh, one line on Robinhood. These guys were pouring in millions of millions of dollars, repeat over, 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 short-term expiration, 20, 30 points out of the money, especially on NVIDIA. And today was one of the most aggressive rallies I can remember in 25 years. That's not even an exaggeration. That's what happened. Look at the low on the Qs today. The low on the Qs today were 452. The high on the Qs today, today were 469. Insane. Look at the SPY. The low of SPY today was 540, right? 540. The high in the SPY today is 555. Insanity. Absolutely insanity. And when you go chart by chart, day by, you know, chart by chart, sector by sector, just the most incredible moves. We'll get to the pivots in a second, but look at, you know, we'll start off with Tesla, right? Tesla was weak pretty much the whole day. And then finally, you guys remember yesterday we talked about uh, reclaiming the 50 day moving average. Finally, Tesla started coming alive, reclaimed back that 224 level, pretty much closed at the highs of the day, right? Look at Amazon today. Talk about a stock that went out of its mind. Okay. Amazon you guys remember yesterday we talked about Amazon potentially reclaiming back the 50-day moving average? Well, this is what happens when you reclaim the 50-day moving average. Amazon went out of its mind today. Okay, it feels like it, it feels like the that you know, when I looked at the at, at the book and it said Nasdaq was only up like two, two and a half percent. It felt like the Nasdaq was up 32% today. That's how crazy it was. Huge breakout on Amazon, right? Absolutely huge breakout on Amazon. We talked about Avago, right? We talked about Avago last night. Look at the move on Avago. We talked about SMCI. You guys remember last night? I even gave you guys the price. I said, hey, 519. Go back to, you know, 419. Go back to last night's video. I said, 419. That's exactly where it stopped. It gets above 419. This thing could wake up. So you had one of the most exaggerated rallies I've ever seen in such a short period of time. Everything pretty much closed uh, at the high of the day. Uh, it felt like the most euphoric, euphoric day I, c I could possibly imagine. Um, I can only imagine if you were shorting, if you were shorting into spikes today, um, how your business looks like for tomorrow. So absolutely incredible move. Stocks were going nuts all over the place. Pivots were good. Uh, we actually had a downside, we actually had a downside pivot today also. But the point is the market right now from the macro point of view is now embracing a potential uh, rate cut. They feel like it is uh, more real than just kind of talk or hearsay. And overall, the market was just bull mode today. I think that's the best way uh, to say it. And when you go into tomorrow's session here on the key metrics, right? 
If you told me yesterday we were, we were going to be an arm's distance away from reclaiming back the 50-day moving average, I thought you were high, respectfully, right? But here we are, right? Here we are. The NASDAQ needs, the Qs need to get back above 471. 471 is the 50-day. If the Qs get back above the 471, all this bad dream right here, right? All this bad dream over here kind of goes away, okay? You look at the SPY today, right? Look what the SPY today did. Reclaim back. Not only did it reclaim back the 50-day, reclaim back the 20-day, the 10-day, and the top of this channel, which is the 50-day EMA. Watch, you know, SPY. Again, it starts putting in a new base above this channel. It's going to go bonkers. Uh, Dow Diamonds, you don't have to you don't have to look. There's only 30 stocks. Uh, look at the IWM, right? IWM is a lagger, but at least it finally woke up from the dead. Keep this in mind. IWM represents the smaller names, right? The smaller capitalization companies. So it's not going to have the same effect. When institutional money is charging full steam ahead, they're not buying AMC. Sorry, not sorry. They're just not, right? They're not buying AMC. They're not buying GameStop. They're not buying some you know, $2, you know, $2 stock. They're buying the Amazons. They're buying NVIDIA. They're buying you know, the, the Teslas of the world and the Apples and the Oracles uh, and the Metas and the Microsofts of the world. And today's action uh, really, you know, really show that. Uh, so going into tomorrow, I, I have to assume, right? I have to assume at the open, we'll get a little bit of, uh, you know, we'll get a little bit of uh, profiting, right? I mean, just, just, it's just the common sense. I mean, how can you, how can you go on a, a four, how can you go on a four hour binge, right? Excuse me, five, five hour candle. There's only six half candles in the day. You're going on a five candle without a down tick, right? Without a down tick. Let me just take this off here. All right. You have, this, this is after hours candles. So you have five hours worth of green candles. I assume, again, I don't have to assume anything, but I assume at some point tomorrow morning, we will definitely get a little bit of profit taking. Well, at least I shouldn't say definitely. We should get some profit taking. Common sense says we should, because it feels like you're chasing that $2 stock that you bought at 10, that's now it's a 20, and now it's a 50, right? At some point it has to come in. So I, you know, I would like to, I think that's the best way of saying it. I would like to see some uh profit taking for tomorrow. And those those stocks that reclaim their major levels today, I would love to see them trap shorts on that profit taking, take out today's channels, and then full steam ahead for a potential uh day two. So uh let's talk about uh today's pivots. Um crazy, right? Crazy. So, uh, you know, here is, you know, yesterday Tesla, we talked about in last night's video, had a big, big breakout above uh, 220.36, reclaimed the 50-day moving average, closed at the highs of the day. It was actually profit taking pretty much the whole day in Tesla until it finally around, around two-ish, around two o'clock, finally reclaimed back the 224 level and exploded, right? So here's the nose, big breakout yesterday, reclaimed the 50-day, needs to confirm 26.40 for more upside because it started reclaiming its channels back towards the end of the day. You didn't have the biggest move in the world, but you still had a $2 move. Uh, you still had a $2 move uh, into the close. This thing looks higher uh, as well. Uh, SMCI, we talked about this last night. We, I, again, I literally gave you guys the price last night. 419 uh, needs to build above the 50-day supply. Here was SMCI when nuts just went on. Look, look at the 60-minute view. Was it a, literally wasn't a down tick? You know, wasn't a down tick. Put up a thirty dollar candle, uh, four nineteen. Close at the high of the day at four forty six. Still has a lot of upside. Uh, Nvidia. This is my first trade of the day. Nvidia today. I, I I was happy with that first move when it took out that one hundred nine sixty five. The nine you know nine five channel went to the eleven fifties. Right, went into the eleven fifties. We we're like, yo, we just sold the highs. We did sell the highs at that time. Because they took profit in the stock, took it down to 107. And when the Goldman Sachs conference with uh, the CEO of uh, NVIDIA ended, this this was, I've never seen a stock did not down tick. And talk about buyers. Folks, they were coming in with panic buying, panic buying, seven figures in the October 130s, the 140s, the 150s uh, for November and, and February. So Craziness, absolutely craziness. But 109.65, it went to 11, it went to 11.50s. It reclaimed back that $12 area. And look where NVIDIA closed, right? Look where NVIDIA closed. NVIDIA closed right underneath the 50 day. Uh, any move, any close above the 50 day on NVIDIA, uh, there should be higher prices. Uh, Amazon, we talked about last night, 180.50s, the 50 day reclaim 
Uh, big level here was Amazon, just destroyed this number, 180.50, uh, took out also the 182.30s, the whole range high, reclaimed the 50-day moving average, and traded up to 85. Monster, monster moves. Uh, Avago, right? Big move yesterday, 150 needs to build for a day to move. Avago uh, went crazy, right? And here's the 150 and it traded all the way up to uh, almost 160. So just crazy. I mean, that's the best way of saying I'm, I'm almost at a loss for words. And for me, that's a lot, right? For me, that's, that's a lot to be lost for words. But uh, ultimately, folks, uh, the market is the market. You know, you have a game plan. Uh, every single day, I have a game plan for the market. Um, I have my pivots to the upside, to the downside. And then I sit patiently. It's not about being right. It's not about being wrong. It's about being prudent and confident in the channels. It's being prudent and confident at the levels that you designated for each security. You know, in the beginning, you know, you could you could be you know in a situation that you're guessing and you're hoping and you're praying your stock is going. For me, I'm just waiting for the market to tell me the price action is right instead of me guessing when the price action will start to be right. So again, folks, it's not about being right. It's about being responsible. Guys, God bless everybody. Good day. I mean, good day today. Hope everybody do well. God's help. I will see you all tomorrow. Take care, everybody. Have a great, great day.